Next presenting company is Iconovo with CEO Johan Vaboy. Welcome, Johan. Thank you so much. My name is Johan Vaboy, and I am the CEO of Iconovo. And Iconovo is a company that produces uh, pharmaceutical inhaled products for a global market. We're based in Lund and we are traded on NASDAQ First North. The method chosen to administer a pharmaceutical substance will greatly affect the properties of the final pharmaceutical product. We all know tablets. They've been around for probably more than 200 years. It's a very user-friendly way of, of uh, getting the, the pharma product into your body. But there are a couple of downsides. For starters, the, the onset of action is quite slow. It's not very target specific either. So you get the drug into your whole blood system, which may lead to uh, unwanted side effects. On top of that, some of the new biomolecules is actually not possible to give via the gastrointestinal tract as they will be broken down there. Then we have the the syringe, the needle, the infusion, the injection treatments. That's a terrific way of getting a fast effect of your drug. But it's not very user friendly. It often needs uh, a nurse. And once you're done, you get some, some quite dangerous ways that can spread disease. It's also not target specific. So you get the drug into your whole body with the unwanted side effects. A more modern way of giving uh, the pharmaceutical products is to use an inhaled version. It's a user-friendly way of getting, uh, of administering your, your pharma product. It can easily be taken by the patient itself. You can store it in your pocket or in your handbag. And when you have it, the act onset of action is really, really quick. It's, it's as quick as getting an injection. And also, for many treatments that we have today, it's a, tar it's a target specific treatment. If you want the effect in your lung or in your airways, why not give it via inhalation like you do for, for example, uh, COPD or asthma or fibrosis disease today? It is a very complex interaction between the drug substance that you see here as the powder and the inhaler device. And that requires some quite specific expertise in many fields. So you, you need people who can do the powders, you need analytical chemists, you need mechanical engineers and good designers to really make this come together in a good way. And to, to make the powder, you need to make a powder that is really nice and flowing and it needs to be able to dissolve in a nice powder puff that can get down deep into your lungs. The particles has to be less than five micrometers uh, small. So it's, it's also a very complex uh, area to navigate through the different patterns. You have the, 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 the drug substance, you have the formulation patterns, and you have patterns on all of the mechanical components of this plastic device. So it's very time consuming and money consuming to develop these kinds of, of, of uh, pharmaceutical products, both for novel pharmaceutical companies and for generic companies. We at Iconovo, we have four ready developed platforms that meet the diverse needs that the market has when it comes to inhalers. We started back in 2013 to develop uh, inhalation devices and one of the first inhalers came uh, from a team who had been working at AstraZeneca and IcoRes was the result of that and it's our inhaler that is similar to the TurboHaler inhaler. But our inhaler has a couple of add-on features that the original inhaler does not have. For example, you have an exact dose counter, you have a feature that gives the patient feedback if they have un inhaled correctly, they will see that. You have room in the inhaler to add uh, digital components and also it's future proof since you can uh, fill it with three different, different substances to accommodate triple combination. The second inhaler here is our newest inhaler, IcoPre. 
That is an inhaler that is equivalent to the Ellipta inhaler from GSK. And that is a very important strategic endeavor for us. Uh, Ellipta and all of the five products in the Ellipta inhaler is the biggest asthma and COPD treatment in the world today. We have the IcoCap inhaler, which uh, is a capsule inhaler. You, you put the gelatin capsule inside, crack it and inhale. And that is a really big market, especially for clinical trials, but also some of the, the big pharmaceutical generics are in that format today. And then on the right, we have something quite unique. We have ICO-1, which is a single dose inhaler, really uh, simplicity in, in, in the very purest format. And that's the genius thing with this. It's one piece of plastic that you can produce in a very simple and efficient way. And of course, that makes it very cost efficient also for the customer. And this little thing can then accommodate quite good margins also on uh, low cost uh, pharmaceutical products. So we enable pharmaceutical companies to produce inhaled products. So we develop the complete pharmaceutical product with one of our inhaler platforms and a powder that we can make in our own labs or together with partners. And once we have that platform uh, established, we can make an integrated product within one to two years. We then transfer that product to the pharma company who takes over and pays for, for the uh, clinical trial development and the commercial launch. So we have a well-balanced business strategy and it's set to really achieve high revenue from multiple revenue streams and a high profitability. And it's also de-risking us in a nice way since there are different modes of mechanism for these business models. Within the field of novel pharmaceuticals, it's almost too big to understand how big, big this market is. But when we focus on the three areas which we deem mostly important here, fast onset of action, local effect in the lung, and replacing uh, injections, that market is, is, is 1,500 billion Swedish krones uh, big. And we have three collaborations already in that area and more to come. Then we have the business area in the, mid in the middle, which is uh, generic pharmaceuticals. And just to, to size that one a bit, uh, if you only look at the turbohaler products and the ellipta products, it's 67 billion sec in that, on those two products. And we have five collaboration, uh, collaborations in the generic area in total. Then we also decided to take some of our own products and additional products to the Nordic market. We know how to sell pharmaceutical products in the Nordic market. Some of us have been doing that for a very long time. And this market illustrated here, 4.3 billion sec is the asthma and COPD market in the Nordic countries. And we already have one product uh, that we can back license from Amnil Pharmaceuticals. And the field we are in is the dry powder inhaled products. It's an area that is growing by up to 5% per year. And according to consensus forecast, this will continue for quite a while. And it may even be more because the last couple of years we have seen a vast increase in the number of clinical trials with dry powder inhaled product. It's a double uh, the number of products since 2020. And the reason to go into a dry powder inhaled product instead of a, a spray or a, a soft mist is partly because of environmental aspects. You, with a dry powder, you don't have the, the, um, the gases needed to, to really drive the, the mist. And also with the dry stable powder, you have a much, use, uh, much uh, higher in, uh, usability and you have some better logistic capabilities where you, for example, don't need a cool chain or fridges to store your pharmaceutical products. So because of this, this area is growing. And by 2024, if you look into different companies' forecasts, 
you see that the new pharmaceutical compounds have increased in DPI and more than and about half of the products will be in other areas such as diabetes, cystic fibrosis, cardiovascular disease, pulmonary hypertension, for example, and more. Most generic companies actually lack the own experience to go into inhaled drugs, but it's a very, very uh, interesting area for them to be in. And that's because the, when the uh, products lose their, lose their exclusivity and the patents go out, the prices stay quite high. For a tablet treatment, normally when the patents expire, the prices drop by 80 to 90 percent in quite short time. But from, uh, for uh, inhaled drugs, prices drop between 20 to 50 percent, depending on which country you are in. So this is an area where all of the generic companies want to be, but they cannot do it without us. So our business model is to make a license agreement with a pharmaceutical company. And whether it's a novel pharmaceutical company or a generic pharmaceutical company, we make a license agreement with them. They often pay an access payment where they get access to one of our inhalers they get access to our know-how and our labs and our competence. And then we develop the project and the product over a couple of predetermined milestones and we get paid. And at the end of that project, we deliver the, the product to the, the company who then makes all the clinical trials and puts it on the market. And once it re reaches the market, we will get uh, profit split or a royalty from, from the value that is created in the markets. Today we have quite a nice pipeline. We have nine ongoing customer collaborations and we have one product that is ready for partnering. So on top here we have the IcoRes collaborations. One is with Amnil and one is with Intas. They are both in, both in asthma COPD. Then we have Icopri. It's uh, the newest inhaler, ready for partnering, huge portfolio of, of uh, products that will uh, go out, out of patents from uh, 2025. Then we have Icocap with two pharmaceutical products, both with BNC Korea, Altibro and Seabri in COPD. And we have a, a global agreement with Stevanato who produces Icocap. And we also get a royalty from them for every inhaler sold. Then we have ICO-1, from IS, uh, where we have a collab collaboration with ISR, Respiratorius, and Monash. And our newest agreement was with TOA Pharmaceutical, a Japanese company, and that's within the generic area. Just a closer look at, at the ICORES uh, Symbicort project with Amnil. Amnil is quite a big company even though it, it's maybe not as known in, in Sweden, it's a really big company with 6,000 employees and a turnover of, of uh, over uh, $1.6 billion. So we have a royalty agreement with them, 5 to 10% on, uh, on the sales of uh, their uh, IcoRes Buddhist Need for Meterol. And we also back license this product to sell in the Nordics. Huge market, $3.3 billion dollars, of which one billion is in Europe. The other example I want to give is Icopri, which is our big strategic um, endeavor in a market which will uh, go out of patent in 2025. Uh, we have an inhaler with formulations that is, is ready to now go into partnering process. And this is a market that will be worth over five billion dollars in 2026 when the patent when the first patent have uh, expired. ICO-1 is an area which is really, really interesting. We have several companies uh, we are, who are interested in, in this inhaler, but we signed so far three agreements with ISR for a COVID-19 vaccine development, with Respiratorius for a, a drug candidate uh, for severe asthma and COPD, and we have an, a, a collaboration agreement to develop uh, an oxytocin, inha inhaled oxytocin 
for Monash University uh, in collaboration with J&J. &J. That's for a disease or a state called postpartum hemorrhage that actually uh, 65,000 women every year uh, dies from bleeding after having giving, given birth. And this can be stopped by giving them a dry powder version of oxytocin. So this little in inhaler is really in focus. And one of the reasons that it is so popular is that it is uh, one piece of plastic. It's very inexpensive to produce and it gives a really nice um, powder to inhale. We also established a Nordic pharmaceutical company. We have now started to establish this company, Econovo Pharma AB. And we have the goal to set up a company now in the coming one, one and a half years. We will recruit four to five persons to go into the tender business uh, for these generic products. So we set up a quality system, pharmacovigilance system, and we will have the wholesaler license ready for next year. This is a big market. I just want to point out here that uh, Symbicort has 50% of the market in the Nordics, and we will be the first drug which will have the possibility to be fully substitutable versus the original product. We are well, well financed and we have, have a good owner base. A lot of the shares are owned by, by the, the board and the leadership. And the targets for uh, 2027 uh, is now communicated. We have a target set on uh, having 250 million Swedish crowns in income and a margin of 50% leading to a profitability of 125, uh, 125 sec, uh, million sec. So we today now we have eight customer agreements in place. We have our firm ambition to uh, have additionally two to three agreements per year. And we also will establish Iconova Pharma to set the tra trajectory to, to become a really profitable uh, company within this area. On top of this, we have an additional upside in, within the original pharmaceutical area. And that is defined by ISR, which have a, collabor a possibility to earn up to 100 million sec per year 2027 coming from the huge market of COVID-19 vaccines. And I think I will end here to leave some room for some questions. Thank you for an interesting presentation. Uh, you recently decided to update these uh, financial targets. Why did you decide to do this? We, uh, we, had a, we want to communicate how, we s how the company performs both, both uh, short term, like what, what are we doing this year and what are the most important things this year, but also in the, in the long, long term. So five year for us is a good horizon that we probably will, will stick to because it gives, uh, it gives a good view in the, in the real kind of big values in having a uh, royalty-based uh, model. And even you know, in this uh, target, the, the Relvar sales from IcoPre will just be launched in the end of 2027. So it's really also just in the end of this or kind of from 2024, we will see the first royalties in 2027, in 28 and 29. This will really kick in. And I think that's really part of, you know, to understand the, the business case of Iconovo. This is also where you, we need to focus. Interesting. And thank you for joining us today in the studio. Thank you. Happy to be here.